Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us again tonight. This is Abid Baidas. I'm going to be your host, your presenter. And the person that is going to help to enjoy a very intriguing conversation uh, with, with a man that you probably haven't heard uh, his name before, but you've seen all of his work uh, all over the world. And be prepared to listen. Uh, prepare your questions uh, to get started. Uh, I'm, uh, as Abbott Bidas has always in, uh, been intriguing people uh, with the conversations that he has, I'm always intrigued to talk to Michael and listen to Michael with his short, brief answers that taught me a lot how to reduce my conversations, my presentations, my discussions. To, uh, to slogans, to uh, simple uh, statements uh, of facts. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's share uh, to welcome uh, Michael. Thank you for joining us again, Michael, this evening, all the way from Thank California, Ventura. And Thank you. Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. you uh, he has been sharing his, exper his experience in uh, how much he's suffering sitting, watching the beach, the ocean, uh, from two sides of his place. So uh, we have an open invitation to visit him. Hopefully that stands. <laughs> uh, let's share a video, if I may. Or present. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> now, this is, this is the presentation of some of Michael's uh, legendary work. When you hear of the Michael Jackson, when you hear of the Jurassic Park, uh, the Raiders of the Lost Arks, the movies, the Triumphs, uh, these are names uh, made it, le became legendary uh, that people wanted to copy, people wanted to chase to pursue uh, to become those brands but now let's meet the the the, the, the gentleman who has uh, who has been behind all, uh, all of this work that over the years we learned we grew to enjoy and cherish uh, just a brief presentations of identity branding forum with over 24 years of creating amazing stuff we always get amazed when we uh, meet uh, uh, personalities like Michael uh, Salisbury, who, uh, who's behind Michael Jackson's, you always get to think, what would it take to get that far? And with interns being with us today, uh, they are a part of our career lab uh, through the smart internships. Some of them are carry continuing for their second eight weeks of a training. And uh, as much as they they are learning from me. I'm learning also from them tremendously. And we are all hoping tonight, Michael, to learn from you some of the things that we would like, uh, that you think is going to help us jump the, to, to, to the next level. Uh, this is Michael in the younger age, handsome, good looking, and is still young today. Uh, but behind that personality, there is uh, energy, there is creative minds, there is uh, the dedication, a, a, something that is so unique, call it, for example, likely uh, the smart GPS that helps, that picks up opportunities for every business, any business that falls in his hands. But let's see some of the things uh, in brief video, what he, uh, what he did. My name is Mike Salisbury, and I fuck communism, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You say, <coughs> 
Michael, uh, in the last eight weeks, I spent time with my uh, interns uh, teaching them how to create relevancy. And I huh? think your, 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 most of your work is about creating relevancy, isn't it? That's, that's a good point. Thank you. Um, and, and relevancy makes, is, creates something that people can relate to. And I never wanted to be too obscure. And, and that, but being successful with it, uh, your main focus with, with relevancy, was it more relate, related to the fabulous artwork and designs or the, what the drives emotions the most? Oh, it, the whole thing, uh, it, the the whole the idea of branding is um, to to create something that people can can relate to, and also something that uh, relates the relevance of the brand itself. It's hard to brand anything that doesn't have quality to begin with, because uh, since that's there, then the consumer doesn't have to um investigate the brand to discover what it's about see so, so you, you, sh you shorten the journey for the consumer to be convinced whether to buy your brand or not exactly and then the uh, uh the brand uh symbolism becomes uh, something that can be marketed and sold itself that was a uh, for this Jurassic Park logo, Steven Spielberg wanted something. He wanted a badge that he could apply to anything to merchandise it. So it's it's a badge. So so the focus of the movie is to create to create a badge that remains in the minds of the audience forever. The, the creation of the of the symbol, the logo, yes. And has it continued with that uh, purpose to this day? Is it being sold required uh, in demand, that logo? Yeah. I see it all over people on T-shirts and uh, hats and little kids and grown-ups. And then uh, this one I did too, uh, Star Wars, which, you know, is the biggest uh, movie franchise in history. And this is merchandise, and I see this a lot of places. But I think because it's picturesque, maybe the Jurassic Park one, people relate to a little bit more. Tell, tell us about your beginning with the marketing world, if you would, uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, well, I would, I would, one of the things that's important when you get to do these things is self-promotion. You know, don't be too uh, shy about telling people what you do. Enter all the contests, send out announcements of things you're working on, and, and, but in, a, in a, either a simple or a clever way. And my first uh, trip into uh, the commercial world, I went to School of Architecture. And uh, one of the things I was really good at was rendering, you know, illustrating. So I got work... Uh, my first work was rendering buildings, um, you know, what they would look like when they're completed. And then from there, I went into, I was surfing and I went to the surf magazine and surf companies, surf companies I did logos for. 
And then the surf magazine I went to work for as an art director and cartoonist and reporter. Interesting. And the, the, so from there and on, you, things just evolved uh, for you. Uh, is, is that where it started in the movie industries or was it more in the commercial markets? No, the movies came later. That was, um, the, I worked on surf movies, but mainstream movies came later. Um, movie business is, is hard to get into. It's a, a, a small clique of people that for once have the stamina to the work. It takes sometimes, like even to do this thing, took hundreds of concepts, sketches. And uh, and then th there's only a few people can do that kind of work, and especially overnight. Like I, I could, I come, I'm pretty prolific, so I could come up with a lot of ideas, and then that just established a reputation. And the good guys pick me out to work for them. You know, Spielberg and George Lucas and the, the Michael Douglas, and I had a good clients. So would you would you say you 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 come up with hundreds of concepts? Uh, is that uh, single-handed or you had a team with you? Both ways, me and then people working with me. Long hours, wasn't it? Pardon? You, you spent long hours to come up with hundreds of concepts for the client only to pick one or two out of it. Oh, I, well, first of all, works like this. You make a presentation, then you do revisions, you make another presentation. What I'm really good at is I'm very fast at ideas and then i'd have people render them for me a few i'd render myself but uh, uh the one thing again what, that i'm really good at is a lot of ideas very fast my mind is a library and i can i use all those things in there for reference to create your mind uh, is a library is that all because of a lot of readings or because of a lot of concepts that you created in your mind well, you know, both. Uh, my mind has a lot of things stored in it, image-wise and reference-wise, copy-wise, and then um, I can I can pencil it out with my hands, and then I get people working for me to make it better and tighter, so it's more presentable. I, well, it's a I, funny story about this one. Um, we did hundreds and hundreds, and. Uh, uh, nothing ever came back and i thought they were all rejected and i was driving from san francisco down to los angeles and i was on sunset boulevard and i went to buy this big blank uh, fence and on the fence i saw all these posters with this and uh this logo on it and i go wow i, I didn't recognize that so i went back to my office and i pulled up the files and there it was and i remember i had assembled this one myself with uh, photocopies and i picked the worst typeface i could to say jurassic park and sure enough they picked that <laughs> the worst typeface you can pick yep i mean and interesting and that yep. that that what worked for jurassic park yep. so you, it, was it because it attracted attention being the worst uh, came out, uh, brought the idea the best way. You know what? That's a good point because it might have been the worst. Nobody else would use it, so it was unique and made its own statement. You know, this is uh, nobody had ever seen it. Nobody would ever see that typeface again. Nobody had ever seen it used on anything. So again, it made its own statement. You know, stood out. How did you get convinced uh, the Jurassic Park people to accept it? It was only Steven Spielberg and no problem. I didn't convince anybody. I found it being used. Oh, interesting. Uh, the, oh, this, this is a logo of a, of a campaign. What is it? Uh, what, what is this for? Magazine on the left. That's a painting of the logo of the name of the magazine. That's very famous. That's by Ed Ruscha. Uh The number one, I think the, the most... Uh, high price artist in the world right now he did that for me and i had to put west in parentheses under it because by this time i'd done so many different logos for this magazine they, they wouldn't put up with any more 
So I put the West under it as kind of like an explanation, just to keep using it. What what was the the, the projected perception out of this logo? I, the, the thing I got it for was the value of having Ed Ruscha painted for me, the number one artist in America doing a cover for me. I was the art director of this magazine. It was in the paper, the Los Angeles Times on Sunday. And to get the number one artist in the world to do a cover for me was really an act, a, really a, a, an accomplishment. It, it, it stops you to stare at it. Is that, was that the intention? Sure, absolutely. And what it represents, it represents the sunset and a splash of a wave in the sky spelling the the name of the magazine. Very, very nice message. Uh, you, had, you had all the stars with you. Uh, yes. Well, what was your favorite star and which one of the stars you were their favorite? Um, well, I don't know if I have any favorite. I can tell you the uh, some stories. Uh, like behind me is a my portrait of Alfred Hitchcock, and I went to take his picture, and he had a logo he used on his television show of his silhouette, and I wanted to get, I wanted to maneuver him into that silhouette, so I did, and I worked and worked with him, and I got that, and I got that picture, and I took it, and I, as I slapping myself on the back I realized wait a minute he's a director he knew exactly what I was doing because I thought I snuck it in <laughs> okay what's what's the story with Tina Turner you were also uh, behind some of her work what did you she do was, for her? No, when, I, when I went to Rolling Stone to be the art director there I wanted to get them into the real world as a real magazine. And I wanted them to do more articles that would attract advertising. So one, I, I wanted to do one on jeans, on blue jeans, because that was the happening thing. And for the inside illustration, I dressed her in jeans and I had her photograph to represent, because the rock and roll magazine represent, you know, jeans and rock and roll. And I got Tom Wolfe, the very famous writer, to write the article. Very nice. How how many how how much how much would people pay to be in your place at those times with Tina Turner? Uh, you know, I never thought of it that way, but you're probably <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, there's George Harrison. Now, now a lot of people uh, are envious of that. That was his. Uh, his cover for the album George Harrison. I spent a long time with him. Does it carry anything, any special uh, memories? This this uh, story, this picture? Well, he was uh, very easy to work with and he did what I wanted him to do. And uh, it was hard to uh, get a good picture of his face because he had a lot of skin problems. So I got this in his greenhouse and the glass of the greenhouse with the with the, the moisture from the plants kind of did a filter for me. Oh, probably you wouldn't have today with all of these technology filters that you have out there. Well, I don't know. It was, it, yeah, but it might look too artificial, you know, working with, working it over. And I didn't want to do any of that. He didn't want any retouching. So I, I just did it in the camera. Brilliant. Uh, what's the story with this one here? This motorcycle. This is a story. There's a very famous movie called The Wild One with Marlon Brando. And it kind of kicked off the whole image, the rebel image of a guy with a black leather motorcycle jacket and jeans. And this is a group of bikers that influenced the whole look of that movie. And so they're this, in, in. This is from a movie. Yeah, no, it was a still that inspired the look of the movie. I this see. Is a, this is a press picture. A press picture is for what the, the the motorcycle or the leather? No, the press picture for for a, a newspaper about this group getting together like this, this gang. I see. And uh, a, a lot of your work was associated with jeans. 
Yes. Uh, why is that? Is that because of the old Wild West that is popular in, in our genes? Yeah, it just happened to be the, the close of that generation. Still to this gen until to and still to this generation, except we right now we have torn up genes. Now, how would you feel about the generations of your time that you were built, you were working with, and today's gene generations that believing in the torn up genes and the uh, uh, a new signs that they are trying to project the new messaging? Um, well, that's just a derivative of of, of the original look, you know. Um, some got a little ripped, and so that people turned that into a fashion statement. But ones that got old and people kept them for a while, they got ripped on their own. And then people, a friend of mine, uh, manufactured those kind of things, and they would go to Mexico to get them ripped by machines. And uh, so it's all it's all relatively artificial, but it's out of still the, the basic genes movement, genes look. But wasn't the genes back then was more for the macho man, the tough people, uh, the hard workers, uh, and, and they, became, they became pushed more when they were adopted by teenagers. These teenagers. Who oh, did it out of these groups, uh, inspiring them to be sort of rebels in their clothes, plus they fit. This is Marlon Brando from that movie. See, so uh, uh, tell us about that story there. Uh, that's a line from the movie, The Wild One. And his, yes, and his, what are you rebelling against, Johnny? And what do you got? That's like all kids became, yeah, we're all rebels, you know? It's in, in the aftermath of World War II, the, the consumer society, in the United States, and uh, so everybody and you know, everything was comfortable, and but every but kids wanted to rebel against that, to show that they weren't really you know uh, conformists and and part of just the basic population. They wanted to be different. So you, you that's what I would give, I go back to the initial statements relevancy. So basically, uh, your campaign was more to communicate to talk to the generation that is rebelling against everything in the United States in the 50s or the 60s, right? And then I I, I, uh, I created the 501 brand name for Levi's and then uh, marketed the, the, the Levi's 501 cut for women and uh, uh, did that uh, uh, with a, a takeoff of a James Dean image. And I put the woman in the same image. It was a metaphor. Now, this particular uh, one has a story. Uh, how how you transformed Michael Jackson to uh, from what it was, what it is. Uh, tell us about the I like it. Okay, um, I saw Michael Jackson in the movie The Wiz, which is an all black version of the Wizard of Oz of the uh, and. Um, I said this, he was holding himself back. He was so talented, he was better than anybody else. So I knew his manager and I went to him and I said, I'd like to do something for him. He says, well, here, we got this cover for his next record. And I looked at it, it was horrible. It looked like a, 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 they treated him like a little kid. And it looked like an advertisement for children's furniture. And, uh, you know, I said, let me do something. So I went out and got some drawings by a fashion illustrator. And I came back in and I presented uh, in that in those days when you did a record, you didn't really have to do preliminaries like I was talking about. I did on Jurassic Park. You just uh, just worked with the artists, uh, management to get it done. But I went to back to their office, which was uh, the end of the, the Sunset Strip, right before Beverly Hills in Hollywood, and it was on the upstairs office, big high ceiling uh like two-story high ceiling and he behind this big marble desk and the velvet curtains and i came in with the drawings and i presented his drawings and i got no response and i heard a little squeaky voice says i like it and out from behind <laughs> out from behind the curtain came michael jackson he said he wanted it the only thing he wanted different was to be able to 
wear white socks. And I said, no problem. I said, if you wear the white socks, roll your pants up, pull them up with your fingers like Gene Kelly did in, in American in Paris. So he did that and that's my picture of him on the left. And that's me imitating the cover of him on the right. Yeah. Was it easy or hard to work with him? No problem at all. No problem at all. Anything I wanted to do, he'd do it. He just wasn't a very good poser. You know, oh. he's like, so I finally got him in the situation in there that was in the cover and a poster of him uh, leaning against that brick wall. And I found the brick wall. Well, the, more photos of him failed in the uh, studio. So I went out in the alley behind the photo studio and I found that brick wall. I said, well, this looks like the, a stage door in, on Broadway in New York. So I put him up there and got the picture real quick before we got kicked out. Creative. Yep. Wow. And uh, leather, leather, leather. It, it was that also part of the culture back then? Uh, out of the movie the wild one yes and it became if you're a rebel that's what you wore there you, you, there you look at your shoes look like marlon brando so the, the, there's a lot a lot of the stars actually were more hooked with the leather uh, jackets uh, fashions uh was that the uh, the it among the stars the, the pop stars especially the rock stars Oh, what are you asking now? Was that the thing? With especially with the rock stars. Yeah, that uh, was a, the symbol of them being rebels. See. The tough West, the tough old wild west, uh in, in that sense. That James picture, the giant. Yes. Now that picture is is presenting what? The hard working world? The challenging what, world, or what kind of a messaging is does that supposed to portray? This is still from a very famous movie with James Dean. And it was, to me, it showed how jeans classically fit. And it's very symbolic and everybody knew it. And I used that and I put a woman in that to symbolize the fit for women's jeans that were now cut like men's. And that's you did that for Levi's. Levi's women's wear. Interesting. And this is your book. Yes. You sold. I sold sex, drugs, and rock uh, and, and rock and roll. And yes. That's and that's the title of the book is really off the wall. Uh, but wasn't that risky? Or you th you you realized you had a market out there that is susceptible or accepting uh, this kind of uh, titles, ch bold ch titles. Well, what I did it for was most people wrote books about the kind of thing I did that was just all text and boring and a good part of my work's visual. And I wanted to, I wanted to do something different that just wasn't all typed like a Bible, you know? I just, I did this and the, the sex is from play, I, worked as an art director playboy and the drugs was from you know rock uh rolling stone and rock and roll was the different music uh acts i promoted and to say i sold those that most people in my kind of work go, oh no we, <laughs> we don't sell things we're fine artists no we aren't absolutely that that was that was a bold uh, courageous idea there now we but, see we, we see mike mike salisbury on a tractor is that no. part of your work or part of your lifestyle? Um, that's another kind of work and, and part of my lifestyle. I rode motorcycles and surfed for over 50 years. This is on the Amazon. And going, we went down the Amazon with these four wheelers. And that was a skull I found laying, you know, where a cow had died out there in the Amazon wilderness. And so I put it on like my trophy. Oh, amazing. And that's you. Now, is that part of you waiting for an idea or working for a production or something to happen? I was just at home and uh, a friend took the photograph. This is Andy Warhol's before me now, and that's my uh, Alfred Hitchcock portrait there. That's the 
Alfred Hitchcock was a unique character. What, oh, was, yeah. what, what was mostly fascinating about him? Um, he was very sincere, came out of his uh, cottage at the lot to meet me personally. And, and he was it's exceptionally friendly and nice. And like I said, I thought I was manipulating him to get him into that pose. And then I realized later that's what he did for a living was manipulate people. <laughs> that was a cool statement. Uh, and, and, and he realized he got you on, uh, on, on board uh, with this. Uh, let's just stop in here for a second and get back to the questions and to see if the crowd has any questions uh, for us. Uh, what what? If you have anything to share with the uh, our interns, what will be the one message you would like to tell them, Michael? In what regard is uh... and their career to, with the world of branding, with the world uh, their personality, uh, the the, dyna the dynamics of the personalities to, to succeed. Oh, whatever you do, promote yourself so you can get more work. Constantly tell people what you're doing, and I I, has, I was an expert at self promotion. Perfect. Any any questions, uh, our guests, our attendees? If, uh, you said that you have a lot of questions that you have. Okay. They're 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 got in uh, mind to think in terms of a lot of that uh, what we've talked about. Uh, uh, the the one experience that we would like to accomplish in there now with the Michael with Mike Salisbury Fellowship uh, that we are working with, on right now. Uh, what will be the most that you could anticipate? to translate for, uh, to, uh, to become the legacy of Mike Salisbury, that experience, that deep, deep, deep experience that you've had over the years. Uh, how, how, could, how do you see the fellowship would actually help to transfer, to transfer this to the Arab world, especially, that hasn't been exposed to Mike Salisbury or to Mike Salisbury's work? Well, um, the important thing is, is, is learn how to communicate uh by creating metaphors michael jackson in a tuxedo is a metaphor as a young kid and now i put him in a tuxedo and that says big time entertainer um the woman in a james dean famous male pose to show to symbolize a man's cut for women's jeans that's a metaphor um uh, i have done some that are simply symbolic but they still were metaphorical in a way it's like AT&T. I did that globe, but that says uh, world, you know, communications. Um, this uh, symbolically says military, the style of lettering. It's what uh, uh, George Lucas wanted something, you know, that was like, military of the Kaiser era in, in uh, Germany. And that's what I worked on for, for this. The, uh, the Jurassic Park one was to create a symbol that said that could be merchandised and, relate, and related to, it's not so much a metaphor because it's literally the skeleton of a dinosaur, but uh, so, yeah. so, so the uh, the interns understands more clearly the the metaphors. Uh, the idea of Michael Jackson white glove was of Mickey Mouse, right? Oh, what he did is he wanted. He called and he said, he, they, "Somebody called me and said he wanted to wear white gloves." And I said, "What?" They said, "Wanted to wear white gloves." I said, "How many?" I said, "They said two. I said, "That's two Mickey Mouse. One." <laughs> So and you create and, and the, the the white gloves of Michael Jackson was the huge one that actually was his, his trademark. But to go just one, <laughs> simplify it. Uh, where one of the one of the entries. What is your favorite work from all? I 
think, well, I don't have any real favorites, you know. I just, I, I like best what I did with photography. It's always a very good feeling about that. That's like actually creating my own art. Everything else, and I did some of it for clients, but a lot of it was, it was done just for me. Um, like the George Harrison, he was a client, so I did that for a client, and the uh, Alfred Hitchcock was for a client, but uh, and Andy Warhol too. But I did their portraits how I felt I wanted to take them, and I that my 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 most personal statements are the photography. Very nice. Uh, any other questions? Okay, Michael. I guess yeah, that wraps it up for tonight. Uh, okay. And I think we, we will have more time to spend in the next couple of weeks with our interns oh, for, the, for the uh, marketing campaign of the Mike Salisbury Fellowship, uh, oh, the yeah. communication. So we start getting more depth, of, uh, uh, more depth to the ideas our girls are producing. I will share those with you on the email. Uh, okay. and, and then we will have a platform discussion uh, and those conversations. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. It's always a blessing to have you. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and hopefully we'll see you soon in Dubai. Enjoy thank California. You. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Ciao.